What's going on, everybody? Brad and Greta Zood, Parenting with the Zoods podcast. And on this episode, we are going to talk marriage. And we've got tons of marriage advice because we have the perfect marriage. We've never fought once. Never. It's just going mm -hmm. movie magically, Instagram perfect. Magic. And so we have all the answers, so you need to listen to us. <laughs> right. Now, on this episode, we're talking um, expectations inside of your marriage. And if you understand and get expectations right in your marriage, it's going to alleviate a ton of emotional and mental stress. And guys, totally make your life easier. Ladies, wives, completely solve a whole bunch of problems <laughs> inside your marriage. So if you're listening to this on the podcast, welcome. We're so happy to have you. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you're on the podcast, you can head over to YouTube, watch this on YouTube at The Zoods. And if you're there on YouTube watching this, you get to see us in our beautiful studio. And uh, don't forget to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. It actually would... The button. The button? Please hit the button. Hit the button. <laughs> what, what one's that? <laughs> would uh, definitely mean the world to us. But I am excited to have Greta back on the show. We missed her for a week because uh, she was not feeling well. And uh, you're kind of the star of the show, really. So it's, it's good to have you back. I had to do the whole thing by myself. And um, I don't know how our channel survived. I think it, I don't know. I, I have to go back and see how the, how the downloads were, how the, how the viewership was to see if ratings were up or down. Actually, it was probably one of my favorite episodes. You listened to it? I did. What? I did. <laughs> Guys, I that, that does not happen <laughs> all the time like that. I don't usually, but it was a good one. Now, it featured my children, so that's always fun. And I enjoyed watching the video clips that you made of them. Of course. Yeah. That was good. I put a lot of effort into that one. That, that was, one was really, was if you, if you haven't, if you haven't seen it, you need to go to YouTube and watch it. It's, it's, uh, the story of how we, um, sent our three year old to the potty alone in the in middle church. of church. And, uh, so I'll put a link in that in the description, but you, um, need to see that as well. And, and just to clarify, I did not have the Rona, you know, I wasn't sick. Like sick like that. Did you say what I was sick with? I didn't. I wasn't. Interested. No. You know it's oh, okay. it's funny. Are you gonna tell? Him? Go ahead. Yeah. No. I because I was like it was it was funny because she was sick with a, a lady problem, and uh, <laughs> that, I'm not sure that might sound worse. <clears throat> so so problem. I'm I'm sitting here on the podcast, <laughs> and I'm like if you go back and you'll notice like I I do this huge stutter like you can just you can hear me thinking on the podcast and I'm like, Oh, and this is Brad and I'm here by myself. Cause Greta, she's, uh, has the, um, <laughs> uh, she's not feeling well. And it was just like this, this big awkward, like, she, she, she would she want me saying this? Is this kosher to say? What's the deal? So, okay. Now, now everybody's like on the edge of their seats. What, like, what did you, what what did you have? have? Um, I, it was mastitis. Yeah. It's, it's a common breastfeeding thing that happens and block duct you get really sick and fever and the whole thing and I was down and out hard for one day and then um, yesterday was was eh, halfway there so um, yeah I'm really really thankful to be feeling better and so is oh, the whole family yeah it was let me tell you Monday was a ooh, that was a rough day that was a rough day. Well, I think everybody enjoyed it. You know, okay, well, obviously there were many more screens. You think everyone enjoyed it. And, of course they did. Um, and computers, and thankfully our internet was not out that day. Oof. Yeah. But, um, but I am so thankful to see our kids step up, and in particular, like the older girls. They actually really like when I'm down. They like when I'm sick because it gives them the opportunity to show off all their skills. Gives them that and, authority that they love. Well, They're in charge. You know, but but I'm really thankful because, you know what? I, I mean, the girls, they made breakfast. They made lunch. Um, they made some of dinner. You, you were home by that point, I think, right, with dinner? Uh, yeah, I brought a rotisserie chicken home. Okay, okay. A, a classic clutch move yeah but our 11 year old i mean she pretty much handled the the almost two-year-old 
um, all day and changed all the poopy diapers mm -hmm. and and put him to bed and made sure he was behaving himself and um, you know it was just that that rise of responsibility that you see and you're like oh all that training did pay off somewhat right so <clears throat> I'm really thankful to to see that and hear the way that the big ones talk to the little ones when um, when they're in charge you know with that sweetness like oh come here let's do this instead of you know stop it meh, meh, meh. you know they have that opportunity when they have that more of authority um, they have that opportunity to yell at each other right when I'm not there <laughs> but um, but they showed a lot of a lot of sweetness and it was great it was great to to listen from the couch I guess you know, in our family, I guess us, <clears throat> really, our kids are the ones that are like, oh, I, my, I, you know, my toe hurts. I need seven Band-Aids and I need to come sleep in your room and, you know, all this kind of over-exaggerated <laughs> stuff. And it's like with mom and dad, with Greta and I, it's like, you got to be like, in order to get out of your parental duties of eight children in this house, you got to be down for the count pretty hard. And you were... I was down. You were down. That was real hard. That was, that was difficult. Yes, it was. And... It definitely uh, didn't meet my expectations for the day, <laughs> which is what we're here to talk about inside of uh, some marriage advice. So, um, you know, again, so, so we did the video on Rachel Hollis, by the way. You can check out that video below. If you saw us doing the, the video on Rachel Hollis's divorce, um, I'll link that in the description as well. That's kind of... Um, some of our comments on on her marriage. And we kind of poke fun at her a little bit because, you know, here she is out teaching marriage and then, you know, they end up getting a divorce. And, um, you know, here we are teaching marriage, not getting a divorce, which is good, which is nice. <laughs> but we think that there, you know, that there are a couple key things inside of a marriage. Um, and we talked last time in one of our other episodes about getting rid of gifts, the expectation of gifts mm -hmm. um, on yeah. holidays and on birthdays and everything. And this emotional and mental stress that it avoids to not have pressure to get your spouse a gift is incredible. Yeah. <clears throat> I wonder if people are like... Oh, that makes me sad that they don't get each other gifts. And... We do get each other gifts, just not like yeah. mandatory, I have no idea, and it must be on your birthday gifts. Right. Like, I must go spend money so that you know that I loved you, but I hope you like it, And but I had no idea what it was, but I had to do it because it was your birthday. Right. It's just or Valentine's meaningless. Day. Or, or Valentine's Day or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Very thankful for that. But... That doesn't mean that we don't show that love in gift giving at other times. Sure. And like you surprised me lots of times. Mm -hmm. You surprised me with a new vacuum. Mm -hmm. The other, well, a couple months ago, you're like, yep. "Hey, I ordered your vacuum." And I if you vacuum for you, yeah, I'm like it... oh, that was great. <laughs> and you know, if you do gifts on your birthday, that's fine. We're not saying that's bad. Yeah. It's just if you if you're if you're like the obligatory birthday gift giver. Just talk about it with your spouse. Consider it. Be like, is this something where we should do? And go from there. But expectations. Mm -hmm. That's what we want to talk about in today's podcast. That expectations in and of your marriage are one of the biggest consistent marriage killers, killers mm -hmm. out there. Like, you want to talk about a fun killer in your marriage. It's expectations now we haven't always held this view of don't have expectations and i think early on in our marriage that and periodically you know we'll have expectations that we don't even realize that we have that cause problems and it's when we have those those expectations of something whether it be you know how you would want to be treated or how you want someone to you know, do something, maybe it's something in the home or, you know, how you expect your spouse to treat the children or um, date nights or any of those kinds of things. Um, it's when you have those expectations and they're not met, then it leads to dissension between the two of you. Sure. 
And I think the one of the key triggers that intensifies the scenario that you just described is unverbalized, unarticulated, unexplained expectations. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, because I expect you to read my mind of this is what I want date night to look like. Like you're getting me out of the house and I haven't been out of the house in months and the night has to go perfectly and I expect you to, you know, pick the perfect restaurant, you know, do all these things for me and pamper me and then when that doesn't happen because I never even told you what I wanted. Sure. Then I get angry. Sure. Yeah, and and vice versa like you know, it's like, oh, okay, but then, you know, later when we get home, let me tell you what my expectations <laughs> yeah. are. Ah, you know, I want you, you know, <clears throat> swinging from the chandelier and, you know, the whole deal, right? And then I don't articulate those things and then they don't happen. And then it's all, you know, just this big hurt. You know, your feelings get hurt on the first half. Right. My feelings get hurt on the second half. Right. And it was a miserable night for everybody. Right, right. And, and so now when you, expectations are okay, but getting rid of most of them, particularly the unspoken ones is, is really the key. So you can talk about like, like we talk about what date night means. Um, we, we talk and, and it's from my perspective. Okay. From my perspective that on our date nights, the thing that I need to concern myself with is making a fabulous date night for Greta, right? That should be my primary concern in this is like, what would be the most fun for Greta to do? And, you know, having it be all about me is the only concern of that date night. <laughs> well, I'm just kidding. It's the only chance you got for later on, no. <laughs> and from Greta's perspective, you know, she should go, hey, you know, <clears throat> what, what what is my husband like? What What would be, what is something I could do to make sure he has a fabulous date night as well? And... If you concern yourself with those things and consider others and not yourself, everyone gets taken care of and it's well, much better. Okay, so let's talk about what expectations are. I mean, expectations are really only about self, right? Like, ex what I expect is what I want, what fulfills me, um, you know, what will make this best for me, what will... Um, or what will ruin it for me, you know, the expectations are all about self. And so that's, I mean, getting rid of self is really what we're talking about. You know, stop, stop the focus on self is, is the goal, right? Mm -hmm. And so for me to focus on you, I have to get rid of my expectations. Well, sure, <clears throat> sure. And again, you know, one of the most important questions that we try to ask ourselves as much as possible or try to ask each other is how can I make the rest of the evening go great for you? How can I make the rest of the night simple for you? You know, and, and it's, and it's asking your spouse point blank, look, what, what are you, what are you looking to get out of the next two hours of Tuesday night? Right. And asking your spouse going, ah, that's, that's, that's great. And fulfilling your spouse's needs and desires, right. Considering others better than yourself serving your spouse, you know, with, with no intentions, with no expectations, um, and just serving your spouse. And when you have two people that do that, you end up having a really strong marriage, a high, high, high majority of the time. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's, I think that that's one of the keys to, um, our marriage and we can easily point to in the times when <laughs> uh, the wheels fall off. Um, nine times out of ten, it's over an issue that I'm being pretty selfish over. Or I have an expectation over and my expectation hasn't been met and all this kind of stuff. Now, if I have a simple expectation of, hey. Only your expectations. <laughs> if I have an expectation, and I Only use the word you. simple, you know. Uh if I have an expectation of, hey, you know, we want to be, you know, intimate at the end of date night um, and like a date night goes by or two or three where like that doesn't happen. It's, hey, you know, we need to have a sit down and talk about this and, and in a civilized way go, you know, Greta, 
you know, I have this need and, you know, we haven't done this and this is actually important to me. And I would encourage you to consider, um, you know, how you can, you know, fulfill me in date night. And, and if, and if the opposite is true and, and Greta's like, Brad, you know, I've wanted to go to, you know, the mall the last three date nights and you just refuse to let me to go in and Barnes and Noble and look at that book I wanted to get, like, what, what am I missing? What, what's going on here? And just talk and communicate these things. Um, life gets so much better. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, I totally lost my thought, train of thought. But, you know, I think that um, we also have this view about um, what things should mm. look like in inside of a marriage. Yep. And we have a Hollywood view about how things should go. And um, <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things that, that I did really early on in our marriage probably just a couple of years in where we've been married for, f- it'll be 14 years, August. <laughs> you knew that, right? I have... <laughs> 14. Yeah. It's just 12, 11, 20. No. Um, 14 years. So, um, in the first, within the first couple of years of our marriage, um, I started to see, like, I really like chick flicks. They're enjoyable to watch. They're fun and um, lighthearted, and it gives you that feeling inside, like, oh, it's so cute and sweet, and oh, I want to have that. Um, but here's the thing, is that when when my life wasn't as centered around flick. me, like it is the heroine in the movie, and, you know, things weren't weren't so magical and and everything I would get discontent and that would lead me to sinful places in my thinking it would lead me to be um, angry with you and discontent with you and so chick flicks were something that gave me an expectation that could not be met by you not not only could I not verbalize it to you uh, did I I didn't verbalize it to you like hey, I want these things, I desire these things, here's what would fulfill me. You know, I wasn't verbalizing any of those things to you. But, I I mean, realistically, that's not life. (laughs) Life doesn't happen like the movies. And, um, and so... I haven't, I don't think I've, like, sprinkled rose petals, you know, in a bubble (laughs) bath with champagne, you know. Yeah, no. I don't don't know. No. Life doesn't happen like that. Life is not a movie. <clears throat> got a frog in my throat yeah. today. Sorry. So so I decided, hey, I got to get rid of this in my life because it brings me to a simple place of thinking um, and it makes me upset and discontent with you. So I don't watch those anymore. Yeah, even if like you told me the standard of what you wanted based upon what you've gathered from a chick flick, like even if you gave me three days to prepare like i still wouldn't it still be wouldn't, able to like yeah not even close no i just i i things fall apart i can't get the music to play in the background you know like <laughs> right at the right time the violins yeah, just no. don't come in Mm-mm. and the lights don't turn off we by just themselves. don't have the right setup in our house i guess yeah you know, the, yeah i gotta install alexa yeah but then you have to say, hey, Alexa, turn on the music. Yeah. Alexa's not that smart. Yeah. Hey, Alexa, here goes Greta again. <laughs> She'll know what that means. Right. No. So get rid of those expectations. Uh, most importantly, the unspoken ones. Well, okay. So some people might be thinking that, wow, that's a really sad way to live your life. You like, guys don't buy gifts and you're not allowed to like, do fun stuff. And that's not it at all. No. And and I think when you get rid of the expectations, the 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 surprises and the 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 care and the um you know, when when you give me affection or you know, you meet my needs in in some way, then it's more meaningful to me because I wasn't 
you know, I didn't have that expectation. Well, and, and what's important here, and we got to run, but like our marriage is not based upon what you can do for me. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the key. And I, and I think some people out there listening may be like, oh yeah, I get a marriage where it's like, I only like my husband if he's acting like what I see in the movies or this. And like, I, like I don't live dependent upon you to fulfill me. And, and and I mean that in a very endearing, sincere, like I love you, you're my helpmate suitable, we're supposed to be together. But if I base my happiness on how you act, or if you base your happiness <laughs> on how <laughs> on how I act, uh We'd have a sad life, right? I mean no uh, nobody can bad. nobody can fulfill that for you. Like I nobody can't, can, you can't you can't. No no human is going to be able to Fill that hole right. and fill that need ever. And, and then people in America and, you know, North America 2020, they say, well, someone out there must. So I'm going to go find someone yeah. who fulfills. And then you date and then they give you the flowers and take you on all of do the whatever. And you're like, oh, look at how well this guy can fulfill me. I think I like him. And then the honeymoon phase is over and you're left with nothing because you based a relationship on what this person can do for me. And how many relationships? Probably 99% of relationships begin and because of what you do for me, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's... And end, and end when they stop. Right, exactly. And so you can't, you can't live off of that. You can't base a relationship off of... It's not sustainable. No, it's not. It's not. So there has to be something more. So get rid of those expectations. Oh my gosh, it will make your life so much easier. Again, talk to your spouse about your desires though. It doesn't mean you can't get what you want. It just means you talk about it. And for you yourself listening to this, okay, you have to think, you have to be honest with yourself and go, okay, well, because you might be thinking like, well, Brad, I don't want very much. I just want my husband to do this or listen to me or, you know, whatever. Um, and talk to them about it. Say, honey, here's what I want to get out of our next date night. What would you like to get out of your next, next date night? Talk about those things. Agree to go and give each other those things. Independent of the other person actually following through. And, you know, continue to build and work on your communication and relationship. And uh, things will get better. Mm -hmm. but, yeah, this topic is so deep. I hate, I hate even leaving it because... There just are so many things that they talk about, but we can't talk about it all night. The so. good news is it's not our last podcast. True. Absolutely. All right. So, um, again, if you want to see the Rachel Hollis video, uh, you can click here. And what was the other video I was going to link to? Oh, the Did He Obey? Oh, yeah, the Did He Obey mm -hmm. video. Click that right there. Don't forget to hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button if you're on YouTube. If you are on iTunes, leave that five-star review, and we'll see you on the next one.